<laughs> is this really how we're going to start the podcast? You opening a bottle of wine. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> our first episode. To so our first there episode. We <laughs> Welcome to the Producers Happy Hour, the podcast where two seasoned producers on opposite coasts have an honest discussion over drinks about what it means to be a good producer. It's more than just numbers on a spreadsheet. It's more than just hiring crew and renting gear. Join us on our continuing search for greater learning with host Sister Christian in New York and Lawrence T. Lewis in Los Angeles. Hi, Lawrence. Hey, Christian. This is it. We're doing it. Our own podcast. Yay. Yes. This is the producer's happy hour. And it combines two of my favorite things, talking to you and having a drink. Come with us on a journey to find out what it means and what it takes to be a good producer. But Christian, who the hell are we? I know who you are. Do you know who I am? <laughs> Absolutely. You are sister Christian Kendrick, production maven of New York City. You've produced commercials, new media, content, print, live stream. You're also, from what I hear on the street, is that you're an award-winning pinball champion. Yes, two seasons running. <laughs> and you're Lawrence Lewis. You have been producing longer than me. Mostly commercials, but you've done film and TV as well. Plus, you're considered somewhat of an expert in the new emerging world of experiential. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> well, um, this, like, you're definitely an expert. Yeah. So, our, granted, our careers have been focused mostly on commercial production, mm -hmm. but we have dabbled in all other areas uh, of media and event production, and that's what we're going to talk about on the show. Right. It's not just a podcast about commercial film production. Yeah, and definitely no woe is me producer war stories here. Well, <laughs> we all know how much we love doing that, so there one could slip in occasionally, all right, but all it right. really isn't the focus. No, it's not. Um, we're here to learn and talk to people about what it means to be a good producer and to learn. You're totally right. We want to focus on the role of the producer and what it means, how we as industry professionals can better support the amazing craftspeople we work with so that they can do their best work. Exactly. And finding that balance between keeping a watchful eye on the money, which granted is a big part of our job. But more importantly, supporting our director's creative vision and servicing the ad agency, client, network, or whomever else might have a vested interest in the project. Oh, there's so many, so many balls to juggle, as they say. We're putting our fingers in all the dikes <laughs> as the as the dam is trying to break, trying to satisfy uh, everybody involved that all has a different idea of what needs to happen. Exactly. I've often described my portion of the job is balancing um, the needs of the director and the company mm -hmm. against what is required from the crew while maintaining the relationship of the company with the vendors. Right. And making sure everyone gets paid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and what a lot of people think is that all we do is stare at a spreadsheet and worry about the budget and worry about numbers. And that's... <laughs> well, some producers so, do some that. Some <laughs> producers, yes. And that is a fraction of the job, but there's really a lot more to it. Big picture. Right. And so on this podcast, we are here to learn. And, and, and Chris and I wholly believe that constant learning and constant growth is important in this business and also just as human beings. It keeps you relevant. Right. And uh, with the industry changing as rapidly as it has, yes. um, we all need to figure out a way to grow and learn with it while remaining relevant. Exactly. So the way we're going to do that is each week, we're going to dive deep into various topics about film production. Plus, we'll have a special guest on each episode to explain what their position or craft requires from a producer in order to perform at their fullest potential. Yes, but this is only our first episode, so no guests this week, just us producers chatting over drinks. What you drinking, Lawrence? I am drinking a, a newfangled Negroni that comes in a bottle. Yeah, you're in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> so that that is a special it's yeah. eight dollars <laughs> and you can buy it at any bougie wine shop i guess we we should say that i'm in brooklyn which is uh, a rarity for us to be face to face it is but we're both by coastal right i'm based in los angeles i'm new york city so normally we'd be talking across the country but luckily for episode one i'm here face to face and christian bought me a crony in a bottle <laughs> necroni in a bottle it's delicious what are you drinking I'm having the same along with a fuzzy wine, uh, a fuzzy wine chaser, to orange wine. To celebrate our <laughs> very first episode of the Producer's Happy Hour. Yes. Well, cheers. Let's dive in. We've got a few things to talk about. Yes, so much. Hey, let's do some crew shout outs. Yes. Okay. This is a segment where we give uh, a shout out to a crew member who 
recently went above and beyond the call of duty. So often as producers, we tend to get together and complain. Yeah, yeah. So we want to take the time to do the opposite and sing some praises about the good and the great people that we get to work with. And we don't just mean department heads. We're talking anybody who submitted a time card is eligible. Yeah. Hell, any vendor, <laughs> like somebody who rented us gear, exactly. they're eligible as well. Exactly. So Christian, who is your crew shout out for this episode? So I'd like to shout out to Maya Yergo. She's my production manager on the last job that I did. Mm. And uh, it was one of those jobs where a couple of positions were cut due to money. And um, my production team and I had to step up and fill the roles. And one of the one of the positions that was cut was location manager. Ouch. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing like dealing with the location. Contact yourself for (sighs) every single thing that goes wrong over a 80 acre property. Oh my gosh. And I can say that uh, the majority of the burden fell on her. Mm -hmm. And on top of everything else she did, she uh, handled it with little to no complaints and um, with grace and respect. Wow. Yeah. I mean, she she really handled it well. So I would like to shout out to her, knowing that uh, she went above and beyond her job and uh, did what was required mm-hmm. beyond what she would have to do as a production manager. And that's kind of happening more and more now with the budgets mm-hmm. we were getting handed, uh, you know. Well, flexibility. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Topic of the show. <laughs> Be flexible because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sometimes these jobs are requiring us to take on more and more work mm-hmm. and and certain department heads taking up slack because we can't afford uh, yes. all the personnel we used to have the luxury mm-hmm. of being able to afford. And a lot of that burden tends to fall on our production managers. Um, the majority of it. Majority of it. Exactly. So cheers to Maya. Cheers to Maya. What was Maya's last name again? Yergo. Y-E-R-G-O. All right. <laughs> well, we're going to put her contact information in the show notes, right? Yes. In case anybody don't needs. Don't take her, though. Don't <laughs> steal her away from Christian. Check with me first. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess we should say Maya's based in New York. Yes, right? but she works all over the country and go. actually all over the world. She's international. There you go. An in- international lady. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, my shout out is to Ben Taylor, who is based in Los Angeles. Um, I'm sure he's been willing to travel, but, um, Ben worked for me. This is a little complicated, but Ben worked for me on a project I did, uh, which was a huge activation that involved, uh, I guess I can talk about it now. Yeah. It's over stranger things. It's so cool. Um, Baskin Robbins <laughs> and stranger things. Yes. And what we did is, uh, there was a lot of aspects to the job. Uh, we, we took over a Baskin Robbins store in Burbank and in Toronto, turned them into Scoops Ahoy, which is the fictional mm-hmm. ice cream shop from the new season of Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. And, but then, uh, we also did an ice cream truck that went all around town. But what we also did is we created an ARG. Do you know what that is? No. Alternate reality game. Oh, yes. Basically, no, I still don't know. Okay, okay. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> you can call it a digital scavenger hunt. Got it. Does that help? Yes. So, I mean, there's so many different ways of, of doing an ARG, but basically it's it's uh, alternate reality. So you're kind of constructing a reality mm-hmm. through whatever means. This was done online mm-hmm. and through various phone numbers that we had embedded in content ads and in the store. And we also had clues in each Baskin Robbins across the country where we had Morse mm-hmm. code and all these ciphers, and that led to an online uh, game, like an online text-based video game where people just found it mm-hmm. and started playing, and they had, and it was all based around the uh, narrative of that season of Stranger Things. Yes, which was such a good season and a fun plot line, so yeah. and great tie-in. It, it, was a great, it was a great project, and Ben Taylor served as my community manager. Ben Taylor worked... What, is, what, what was that? Yeah. I'm going to tell you, Um, (laughs) you may or may not know, but I have done a little bit of immersive theater uh, in my time here in Los Angeles. And Ben has been my stage manager for a project I have called The Alone Experience, an immersive theater show here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And he was there from the very beginning. He started as a PA, but he was so smart and so into what we were doing that he just grew with us as we kind of rode this renaissance of uh, experimental and immersive theater in Los Angeles. So long story short, he's great. And I brought him in to be a community manager for this ARG, which basically meant he was a mole 
in the Discord channels and in the Reddit forums where all the participants were talking about how to play the ARG. So he scanned all of these conversations, summarized them, and monitored how the community was responding to the game and reported back to the developers of the game, which was my experiential director, Mike Woods, at Missing Pieces, which is the production company who this job was for. And he helped advise us if we needed to make things harder or change the way the chatbot was talking to people, or he gave us insight into how people were actually playing the game because you can't test these things. You Mm -hmm. can't rehearse them. They're live. They go live. Mm -hmm. And so Ben was kind of our eyes on the ground who saw how people responded to it and how the gameplay actually played out amongst thousands of people. And he reported back to us and helped us make it even better. So... That was great. He went above and beyond. Everyone was so impressed. He did an amazing job. And it's such a weird, specific thing that he Very did. Very specific. That uh, this shout out goes to him. Nice. So cheers to uh, Ben Taylor. Cheers to Ben Taylor. And again, we'll put his uh, contact information and Maya's contact information in our show notes if you guys need to get a hold of them. Yes, if we're not using them. Check with us first. <laughs> Rolling. <laughs> <laughs> And speed. Christian, do you know what time it is? It's time for tip of the day. Right. And uh, I'll start. Today's tip for me is what you do when you have a celebrity in your shoot, on your shoot, or somehow involved in the in the, in the the project, either a celebrity or an in- Instagram influencer or something to that effect. So what I always tell my production team is to, you know, close your eyes, imagine yourself as this celebrity, think about their entire journey to get onto set and do their job. Because a lot of these people are... They're shuttled around from event to event, to shoot, to shoot. They don't know who's who. They don't really know what's happening until they're in the car and they get the script and they're on their way. You know, They've never met you. They've never met you. Maybe even never spoken to you on the phone. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's a very vulnerable position for mm-hmm. them to be in because they're there to look good, represent the brand as best they can. And it's dizzying the, the kind of promotional work that these people do. So it seems like a very L.A. kind of thing to like cater to celebrities. But really, in order for you to have a successful shoot, Think about every touch point along the way. There's a car that picks him up at the hotel. The car rolls up on the set. Where does that car go? Does the car know where to park? Can the car get right next to the trailer? Who greets them at the car and walks them out? It should be a second AD, but maybe it's not. Maybe they're busy. So you just have to think about every single step. Are they going to be hungry? Are they going to be thirsty? Where's their trailer? Is everything in there? Are there scripts printed for them? They might not have the script yet. The director should be standing by so they can come and say hello, or the agency mm-hmm. producer should be standing by so they could come say hello. And then once they're in the, in the trailer, you know, you need to know how long it is until they're ready, how long it is until you need them on set. Every step of the way should be thought about and curated. So that way there's no celebrity meltdown or, you know, <laughs> which we've all had, which we've all had and you <laughs> want to avoid. And also, you know, the agency wants to make sure that this person that might be their spokesperson, they want to make sure that they're catered mm-hmm. for and taken care of. So really, as, as much as it feels like babysitting, it's really important to make sure that, that every step of the way is thought about, curated and taken care of so, to have a successful shoot. I agree. Anytime that I've taken the extra time to do all of those things, um, it's you get a thank you at the end of the day because not everybody thinks about a celebrity's day the way you just described. Yeah. They assume that they're coming to set and know everything, right. but they don't. Oh. So every set's different. And if yours is running well, right. then <laughs> it's <laughs> then a good thing because not day. all sets are run right. well. Exactly. Right. Christian, what's your tip of the day? Here's my tip. It's going to sound very simple and like common sense, mm-hmm. but not everybody thinks about it because you're um, budget conscious. Yeah. Spend money on food. Ooh, good. I know. I mean, I hear you guys. And (laughs) I certainly have had pushback from my team before because it's something that we can't afford. But here's the thing. Um, It's your decision. Mm -hmm. What you feed people is your decision. So you should think of many different things like, would you, are you going to sit down at catering and have lunch? Because if you're not, then why would you serve it to somebody? Right. Um, you have, especially if you're on a challenging job, if you're already budgetarily challenged, you should know that every, you've asked the crew to maybe be less in size. Mm -hmm. You've asked them to work harder. You've asked vendors for deals and such. But in the end, if you, it's like a kick in the face to feed them (laughs) something that isn't good. So you should always spend money on food. Yeah. Always. Like nobody wants to walk up to a table of PA craft service um, yeah. that is, you know, uh, some granola bars and a few packets of nuts. And we know sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes, but just go to Trader Joe's. Yeah. Then. 
Yeah. Make, yeah. make the best some, out of it. Yeah. Get some fresh fruit. Yep. Yeah. Just add a little bit to it or some LaCroix. <laughs> I know. Shout out to LaCroix. Right. But just um, if you take a little extra moment, because when they when your crew of however many people it is walks in for the day, they are there for the entire day. Yeah. They cannot go anywhere and get anything for themselves. You have to provide it. So just think about what you're providing them. Absolutely. That's it. That's my tip of the day. Excellent. Okay, so this episode is just kind of our teaser episode, but we still have a show topic today. And I want to talk about it because it's kind of what we're doing right now. It's called flexibility. Being a flexible producer in today's media landscape is critical. And that's what you and I are doing right now by extending our producing skills into this new arena of podcasting. Exactly. Like I've never produced straight audio content before. Mm Mm-hmm even though I've boasted that I can do anything. (laughs) This is a first for me. But as we were talking the other day, continuing to learn new things and stretching out of our comfort zones is really critical to being a good producer. Exactly. And, uh, you know, we're going to learn a lot from the people we talk to about this, uh, our guests on the show, I hope. I think getting other people's perspectives, because I've been doing this for long enough to understand that I learned how to do this a long time ago. Mm Mm-hmm. And things have changed. Things have changed dramatically. (laughs) Especially in New York. I'm sure they have in L.A. as well. Very much so. Very much so. Things have changed from, you know, your standard commercial that was shot on film to now content is being used on every platform that you can name. Yeah. And so remaining flexible in the how you produce a job is very important. It is. Vital. My entire last job, we shot 9 by 16. (laughs) <laughs> not 16 by 9. Did you protect for 16 by 9? Yeah, yeah, of course we did. Of course we did. <laughs> yeah, We're hoping still. for some 16 by 9 content, but yeah, 9 by 16, because everything was an Instagram story. The whole entire job wow. was based on Instagram stories. So it's a whole different approach to... It's a different market. It's a different market. It's mm-hmm. a different approach. It's a different mm-hmm. methodology. Mm-hmm. And you have to be able to kind of, you know... Immediately. Uh, immediately become an expert at those kind of things. And flexibility as a producer is the way you're going to do it, not being stuck in the way of how we used to shoot things, being open to the current landscape of how people digest content. Exactly. And I do think that um, what we do is a formula. You're always going to need a camera. You're always going to need a sound person. Mm -hmm. But what I've found is remaining flexible in the approach that we have for how to achieve the creative is how you're going to get your creative done. Yeah. On budget and on time. And it's also flexibility in new types of crew members, new types of equipment, new types of uh, technology that is helping us do our job easier and do it better. When, you know, I've I've been caught many times saying, oh, we can't do that. That's way too expensive. And then all of a sudden, some 28 year old's like, oh, no, I have this thing that makes this thing really simple and easy to do. Well, I don't know if you've heard or not, but 28 year olds are the future. (laughs) I think I have heard that. <laughs> Just once or twice. I have heard that. I think uh, I, I was told that when I was 28 once. Exactly. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm I not. I may have said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I was 28. But um, remaining open to suggestions mm-hmm. and from all crew members yes. or everyone within your uh, immediate community on that job right. is important because it allows you to produce your job more efficiently. Absolutely. I think that's it. Okay, that's it for this episode, but we want to hear from you. Yes, any questions, comments, or any ideas on how to be a more flexible producer, send us a note. Hit us up at producershappyhour at gmail.com, or you can find all of our contact info at producershappyhour.com. And a big shout out and thank you to Kyle Puccia, who is a commercial music composer, and he created our intro music. And uh, another shout out today to our engineer, Tom Tenney at Radio Free Brooklyn, for the studio space and making us sound great for we the sound first so episode. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Tom. Thanks. Lawrence, how do people get a hold of you personally? Uh, you can get a hold of me at indelible-arts.com or at voiceoflawrence.com for my voiceover work. What about you, Christian? I never knew about voiceoflawrence.com. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> Don't look it up. <laughs> I can be reached at sisterchristianproduces.com. Great. We have a lot of great guests scheduled that are coming on to share their knowledge with you. And together, we will continue our search 
on what it means to be a great producer. And if you think that you would like to be a guest on our show absolutely. or have a suggestion of who we should talk to, absolutely, drop us a line. Yes, yeah. please. All right. All right. See y'all. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of Producers Happy Hour with your hosts, Sister Christian and Lawrence T. Lewis. 